So I have a question for you. If you add blue to yellow, is it the same as adding yellow to blue? And will the greens turn out the same? That's the question we're gonna look at today on Color Quest. Hi, I'm Margaret Bird, and I'm so happy that you are here joining me as I am walking through all kinds of experiments in how to bring about different colors of the rainbow. We have been looking at over dyeing now for well over a month, and I'd like to try one more experiment to see if we can welcome green, and that is with an opposite way of using blue from the indigo we dyed last week and over dyeing it with weld. Let's see if that yellow on top of blue will look different and bring about yet one more beautiful shade of green in our color palette. So last week we looked simply at indigo and we were able to dye three different depths of blue using a water soluble form of this magical plant. We used that same blue two weeks ago in order to over dye weld pieces that we have been working with to create all different kinds of colors. So today I want to switch it up. I want to take the blue of what we did last week and we have three different shades you can go back and watch that video and try putting weld on top so first thing we have to do is make a pot of weld dye super easy to do so let's quick measure the weight of the fiber that we have I'm going to sample half of what we made last week. So I have some blues left in order to keep in my color swatches and then use those other halves of the light blue, the medium blue, and then the darkest blue we got, which is not that dark, and use those in the weld dye bath. So let's rip those pieces in half, weigh them, and then we can figure out how much weld we need to use. So here are those pieces that we made from last week with one dip, two dip, and three dips. Because when working with indigo, we want to build up color by doing multiple dips. So I'm going to take these pieces now. I cut long enough pieces of these in order to rip them in half. And then I also made two of each one of the wool skeins. So I have those ready to go. We can just use these three and I still have three that I can keep for my swatches. So let's rip these in half and get them weighed. Okay, 14 grams is what that measured. We are going to work with 100% weight of fiber for the weld, and that means we're gonna be weighing 14 grams of weld. I have the dried weld flowers. You've seen them in previous videos, so I will quickly weigh that, and then we can get that into the dye pot. Now, while we are working on making the dye, you know what we need to do? We need to put those pieces of fiber that have already been dyed into water. And that is because we also wanna work with wet fiber. This fiber has not only been washed and dyed with indigo, I also, in preparation for this, pre-treated the different pieces with a mordant alum for the silk and wool and aluminum acetate for the cotton. As I mentioned last week, you don't need that when you're working just with indigo, but since I knew we were gonna be over dyeing with weld, I thought it'd be great to have that extra binding power 
If you wanna go back and watch any of those videos, I talk a little bit more about the importance of this. And if you've been with us here at ColorQuest, it should be second nature to you now anyway. Fiber prep is critical. It is probably one of the biggest pieces to a successful dye practice. So don't skimp, always properly wash and pre-treat your fibers with the mordant that is most appropriate. You will be very happy that you did. Okay, let's measure that weld. And I have bought my weld flowers from Botanical Colors, which is a wonderful online store that I buy a lot of my dye material from. So if you don't know them, go check them out. They've got so much amazing stuff and they have wonderful resources. That is measured out. We're gonna throw it into the dye pot, cover it with water, and put it on the stove for about an hour to simmer and bring about that yellow. A word about weld. Weld is an ancient dye source, and it is considered to have one of the most stable yellows out there. And what I mean by that is that it is light color and wash fast. And if you go back and look at that video where we first started with weld, you'll see just how vibrant that yellow is. Now, when we used the indigo to over dye, we were very careful about how long we kept it in the indigo itself. And because the indigo was water soluble and it was a bit lighter, I had to leave it in the indigo for about 45 minutes to get that color but I didn't want to completely wash out the yellow undertones. This time, the yellow is going to be going on top of the blue. And because we have three different shades of blue, we're going to be dyeing all of these pieces together. So I'm pretty excited about that to see what we're going to get. And because of the strength of Weld, I'm hoping we're going to get quite a different color, even though it's the same two dye sources. As you know with natural color, every time you step into your dye studio, you're probably gonna be somewhat surprised. And that's one of the things that I love about working with natural color is that it can be a magical experience that surprises you and delights you every time. I love the fact that I get different results and I am super excited that this is going to be yet another one of those special moments. My weld has been brewing for about an hour or so. I've kept it on a fairly low heat just to let that color slowly steep out. I could now remove the weld pieces and put the dye back in and then add the indigo pieces of fiber. However, I'm going to add the fiber right in with the weld still in the pot. It's just going to bring about even more yellow to the dye pot and it's efficient in terms of combining the two processes at once. Always have that risk that some of those pieces of weld might stick to the fiber creating darker patches but I'm not worried about that at this stage. So I'm going to throw those in and see what kind of greens we're gonna get. Now I will check them at about 30 minutes, I think, to see if they're changing in a significant way. And if I need to put them back in, I can. Otherwise I can pull them out at that point. Let's just go check it out, see what happens. Okay, I am 10 minutes in, and I wanna show you what it already looks like. 
I mean, <laughs> those are some dark greens, <laughs> especially with those darker pieces. So it's happening fast, but I'm gonna keep it in and see what'll happen. I'll keep checking it every five minutes. If I like it, I can take it out. Otherwise I can always put it back in. We've got choices. Hello greens, look at those. All right, this is the one dip, two dip, and three dip. And really the silk, which didn't take up as much color, also showed a lot more yellow on top. And this one almost looks like it belonged with that one, but it was in fact the three dip one. But you can recall it was quite light relative to the cotton and the wool. Anyway, three beautiful colors. I wanted to put out the yellow so that you could see the contrast of this to this. This does look quite yellow. The weld definitely took over here, but it almost looks like a lime green to me. It's quite vibrant. I really like this darker color here. It's a really pretty green. I'd like to show you next to the blues now so you can see. So there you have it where we went from the blue of the Ijazome indigo to the green. We really got a nice variation in the palette there and you can see just how that yellow impacted the blue of the under dyed piece. Super pretty. Now, how about if we compare all the greens that we've done so far? First up is the indigo where we did the weld as an under dye and the indigo on top. And you can see, especially in that wool, just how different the greens are. I would say the silk is the closest, but really it ends up being more of a subdued color than the ones we did today where the weld was on top and the indigo was on the bottom. So all big variations. Now let's look at the other two weeks with logwood and iron. There they are. We had the two logwood where we over dyed the weld. We did this one, I think for like five minutes or maybe 10. This was a much longer soak. It got to that rich dark green, very different than the darker green that we have with the indigo from today. Then you can see the iron piece here, beautiful olive -y color. None of them are really the same. They all look quite different, but that is quite an array of greens. It's all made possible with over dyeing with two different colors or a modifier like iron. So green is no longer elusive. You just have to get a little creative in how you might welcome it into your natural dye studio. Now, one thing of note, can you imagine if we were looking at the dark blue indigo of a vat style indigo, for example. In this video, using the Ijazome with a relatively light blue is just one option. Indigo can have all different kinds of shades and depths depending upon what kind of indigo you use and the process. So 
you could certainly continue to expand that green palette even further. Now, we have looked at blue and yellow, as well as greens in between, and even orange. So far, as we've walked through the color wheel here, now I'd like to go to the very beginning of Roy G. Biv, and that is looking at red. I'd like to do that with one of the oldest and richest dye sources out there, and that is cochineal. So I hope you will join me next week as we welcome this wonderful bug into our studio, actually for the first time as a focused video here on Color Quest. And let's see what kind of red cochineal can bring to our rainbow. Have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you here at Color Quest next Friday.